happy Friday. It's been a, a full week and a hard week. Um, we learned of an unexpected death of a congregant, our first congregant death related to COVID. Um, I think for many of us, we realized that uh, um, the pandemic is as bad as ever and that we need to stay as, at home as much as possible. I sent an email to the congregation yesterday uh, sharing the decision that we won't be having any in-person gatherings at Chalice this month. Um, and you know, we had hoped to start worshiping in person this month. If you didn't get that email or can't find it, that information is also posted on our website, on our blog. And uh, in addition to that, what I just said, I was including some information about COVID and the San Diego County uh, guidelines for quarantine and isolation that I um, learned about at a meeting with the county, a briefing for religious professionals on Wednesday. So all that information is in that email and on our website. Um, but it's hard to realize at a time when, um, you know, we thought we were turning a corner um, that actually things are things are pretty rough right now. Uh, Omicron is very contagious. And of course, what we've all heard and want to hold close to our heart is that it's mild and it's mild compared to maybe some other strains of coronavirus, but that doesn't mean it's nothing to be concerned about. And if it's more contagious, that means more people will have it, uh, which means there's more possibility for someone to have um, have it not be mild at all, but have it be serious. So um, in my house, we're, we're locked back down in terms of how we're policing ourselves. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not getting my hair cut this week. My husband is not going to the gym. Um, we're looking back in the early days of the pandemic and trying to get back to that kind of space, um, which is hard. And it's hard when we've had some more freedoms and have been doing some more, more visiting and doing more things. And then, um, and then this week was also the anniversary of the January 6th riot insurrection, um, which is sobering to remember and to reflect that our democracy is still precarious. We still have much to do to secure voting rights in particular. Um, so a serious, hard week, and I've had some low moments for sure. Um, and I've typically used this time, you know, I was started the whole Friday series reflecting on the question, like what, how do we keep from being hope, hopeless? And I've typically answered that question by pointing to something concrete that's giving me hope this week. Um, but today I'm actually feeling pretty good. And so I was reflecting on that, like what, even after a hard week, what lifts the spirit? What <laughs> keeps um, keeps it from hitting too hard? And one of the things I've been working on today, just sort of incidentally work timing, is I'm working on the Black Preachers series that we're offering at Chalice this year. And our January preacher sent me his his sermon video, and so I, you know, I have the privilege of getting to hear it, watch it in advance. And then that, um, it's great, you're gonna love it, January 23rd. And then that got me inspired to work on um, scheduling the next several preachers and start working on some of the stories, which I love. And we have, if you've noticed, on for that series, we've been doing story books written, um, and, uh, written by black authors. And I have those books and have just been sort of figuring out what order and, um, and some of our black preachers become the storytellers of those stories. So they're narrated by black voices. And all of that is just uh, like a very fun, inspiring part of my work right now. And so, uh, you know, I realized that that was part of what was lifting my spirits today. I think it's so important to have something to look forward to. And of course, that's been one of the ongoing challenges of the pandemic, right? The things that we used to enjoy doing, that we used to look forward to, for many of us, uh, have gone away or we feel uncertain about. Um, I've been wanting to plan a trip uh, out of the country with my, my husband for later in the year, and he kept saying, we aren't sure we can go. 
and I keep saying, but let's plan it and then we can we can enjoy the planning and the looking forward and then we can, you know, cancel it or postpone it if we end up having to. So it's hard to uh, have something uh, to look forward to without feeling, you know, sad about the possibility of having to cancel it or not do it. So I had two small suggestions here for January. One is consider writing someone a letter, right? Receiving actual letters used to be something, you know, that you could feel interested in the mail that was going to come and, you know, maybe a letter would come that day or not, but there was something to look forward to. And it's such a small gesture of connection. And of course we have phone calls and emails and, um, but if that sparks in you, consider writing a letter to someone you know and ask them to write back. And some, that's a, a, it's a more prolonged way of, you know, stretching out our anticipation of, uh, you know, a card or something that might come in the mail. Something more substantial, uh, it happens that uh, Unitarian Universalist Reverend John Burens uh, is offering a class associated with one of our congregations, but it's online and we're all welcome and invited to attend. So it's on Sunday afternoons, January 9th, 16th, uh, 23rd, and 30th. So the next four Sundays, our time, it is, um, I think it's 4 to 5.30 in the afternoon on Sundays, and it's on a Transcendentalists. Transcendentalism Then and Now uh, is the name of the class, and it's based on his book about transcendentalism, Conflagration, How the Transcendentalists Sparked the American Struggle for Racial, Gender, and Social Justice that's available from the UUA bookstore. I'm, if you... You wouldn't be able to get it and read any part of it before this Sunday's class, and I'm sure it's okay. Um, so I'm gonna post that information uh, in the description of this video down below. The information is on Facebook. It should be visible to you even if you don't have a Facebook account. Um, but, uh, and let me see what the, sorry, if they're gonna email you the Zoom information or if it's, uh, I will figure that out. Oh yeah, there's a, um, there's a Zoom link to follow, uh, presumably to register. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in, in doing a, a short class on something related to our faith tradition, that would get you through January. And I, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's hopeful that this surge is <laughs> as short. Um, and um, so, yeah, something to help pass the time. Just hugs and loves to each of you. Be safe. Get your booster. Get an N95 mask or double mask. And uh, stay home as much as you can. Keep your circle of contact small as much as possible. Um, yeah. Love you. Take care.